Hello, 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 and welcome to World of Matchups, National Football League preview show, coming to you live and direct from the Grab It Television Studios in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. I am your host, Dexter Reed. To my right, super producer, Spencer the Wiz. Spencer, say hello to the people. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. This week, we are doing the National Football Conference breakdown. Last week, we did the American Football Conference after this, we go straight into previewing games week in, week out until Super Bowl Sunday. Before we get started with the breakdown, this has been a super busy week in the National Football League. A lot of different things are happening. We got pieces moving all over the place, and it'd be wrong of us at World of Matchups, the information superhighway, not to highlight some of these things. So right off the bat, Travis Etienne, running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars, one of their first picks this year. He is done for the year with a Liss Frank injury. If you know anything about these kind of injuries, they're definitely going to require surgery. He is on the shelf indefinitely. Bump up James Robinson. He will be your star running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars this year. Let's talk about Mac Jones. I am personally one of those people that believe Mac Jones should start. He should be Peyton Manning. I don't think very highly of Cam Newton. Cam Newton's unvaccinated, having a lot of different problems off the field. Mac is in there taking reps with the ones. It sounds like Double B really likes this kid. I think he right now, it wouldn't su- look. It wouldn't surprise me to see Mac Jones not only get the starting nod. Cam will be benched. I would. I wouldn't even cut Cam Newton for the money that he's making, and he's not a good teammate if he's not starting. All signs point towards this kid being the future of the Patriot. Watch out for Mac Jones. Next, Sony Michelle's traded to the Los Angeles. Rams, Sony Michelle is to me a bust when you consider what the Patriots did for him. He was just a flash in the pan, had a couple good postseason games, had a lot of injuries. It just never worked out. Now he's on the depth chart behind Daryl Henderson. Bump down Xavier Jones for this year. COVID ravaging Tennessee Titans camp. Everyone is sick with COVID. Vrabel, Tannehill. It's finding its way through. This is going to be something to watch. It's almost better that these things are happening now for these players. But if this type of stuff starts happening during the season, you're going to see a lot of healthy scratches. You may even see postponements, move games. Folks, we haven't moved past COVID yet. You know what I mean? And whether you feel a certain kind of way about being vaccinated or unvaccinated, understand this, that the National Football League is not losing a dime. And so the protocols that are being put in place for those of us who are unvaccinated, there's going to be some forfeitures going on. You are going to face some heavy duty fines. Something to think about if you're a player. Either way you want to go, that's on you. But you can't be mad when the fines get levied. Next, Deshaun Watson. This guy might actually be a healthy scratch all year. He's still on the team. He's showing up for practices. He's not doing anything. He's running with like the threes or fours. But, I mean, the NFL can't do an investigation on the guy yet, so he can't be suspended. They can't put him on the exempt list. They're basically stuck with him. It's like a wart that you want to be removed, but the doctor won't see you all season. It's just a messy situation for Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans, and expect it to be messy all year, and expect it to affect the caliber of team that they put on the field and their performance. Next, Luke Wilson retires. Seahawk faithful. Everyone loves him. Didn't really do much. I don't even know why I put him on the list. I just needed something to talk about. The second half of this, to me, is a little bit more important than Luke Wilson. I think Devin Funches should join him. He opted out last year. Now he's hurt again. Bunches of Funches hasn't been relevant since he was in Carolina. The both of them should just fade out into mediocrity. They were good players, but they never did anything special. Enjoy your retirement, Luke. Do some coaching. Next, this is a big one, Teddy Bridgewater. Named the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. This is a big one. This just affirms most people's assessment of how bad Drew Locke truly is. I think Teddy is a little bit better than Drew. He's got a better arm. He's got better legs. Um, Let's bump up all the wide receivers, all the pass catchers on the Denver Broncos. They're going to have stronger seasons with touchdown Teddy at the helm. Next, can somebody please explain to me how Robbie Anderson got two years 30 million. I just don't get it. It's almost like I failed in life not being a wide receiver in a National Football League. I mean, he's had a couple big plays, but he's never been on any winning teams. He's boom or bust. 
get $15 million a year. Spencer, what are we doing wrong? That's unbelievable. He should have a decent year in Carolina. They're going to be trailing a lot. He's the deep threat. But $15 million? My goodness. He's not DeAndre Hopkins. What? Yeah, he just jumped over, uh, for the first time in his career, over 1,000 yards, but just barely 1,096 yards last year in 16 games. That's quite a bit of, a lot of, that's quite a bit of money for just 1K yards. That's like Antonio Brown in his prime money. I mean, it's insane the amount. It's like Monopoly money the NFL just continues to print. Like in Carolina, when you're online and a Budweiser's costing you fourteen fifty, this is Robbie Anderson's fault. Don't holler at us at World of Matchups. It's going in his pocket. Next, Carson Wentz returns to practice. This is huge. Now, you got to be careful with these kind of injuries. They say five to 12 weeks. All of a sudden, he's practicing. Is he really ready? You know what I mean? You're going to rush this kid back. This is I'm always, always scared of timetables that are met earlier unless you're like Terrell Owens in the Super Bowl, you know, and which we know Carson Wentz is not. If he's not 100% out there, you know what I mean? They're still missing one of their starting guards with the same injury. If he gets clocked, it's over, you know, and, and the guys they have behind him, I talked about them last week. I mean, these guys are like selling insurance. They're not they're not good quarterbacks. And so they have to really do their best to protect this guy. I watched some of their joint practices this week. He was running around out there and slinging the ball all over the place. I mean, he's got the red contact jersey on, so none of his teammates are going to hit him. But is he going to be ready for live contact? Practice is a lot different than a 360-pound lineman laying on top of you. Next, Bills unvaccinated players get sent home. Gabriel Davis, Cole Beasley, these guys have been outspoken about. We don't want this vaccine in our body, which is their right. I totally understand them. I'm not here to argue that. But they come in close contact with somebody who had COVID. Now it's the five-day protocol. They're sent home. It's a mess. I'm telling you, folks, mark my words. This COVID thing is going to turn teams upside down. Guys, in fantasy, when you're drafting, this is something that you want to think about. Do I really want this player on my team? Do I really want to take a chance with DeAndre Hopkins? Do I really want to take a chance with Lamar Jackson? COVID shows up, all of a sudden, they're not playing. Then what? You know what I mean? Don't let the talent fool you into thinking that this is not an important thing to watch. Let's get into the breakdown. Arizona Cardinals. Woo! Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. I love Kyler Murray this year. Last week, I said that Josh Allen could be the MVP. If it's not going to be him... Or Mahomes, it's definitely going to be Kyler Murray. Look at this throw from last year. I mean, the people want to talk about the catch. You know what I mean? Because the catch is unbelievable. Hopkins is is like a football god out there. But people discount the throw. Kyler Murray is like a midget out there, but he's got a big arm. He's got big legs. He's a great, great player. And what I really hope doesn't happen is that Cliff Kingsbury ruins him. I'm not a big fan of this guy. This spread out air raid offense, this stuff works in college. It doesn't really translate to the NFL. You don't have a big time running game. James Conner is an injury waiting to happen. And what has Chase Edmonds ever done in his life? He's like a patch, a, a, a glorified James White. He's a pass catching back. You need a stud running back back there. And again, kind of like Buffalo, I think that they think that Kyler will just pick up the pieces. They are the NFC version of the Buffalo Bills. I'd be concerned. Hopkins is still great, but he's one year older. I'd be a little concerned. He's still really, really good, but defenses are looking out for him because they don't have a true number two. A.J. Green's done. He should really just retire. Christian Kirk, eh, meh. You know what I mean? Good players, but the, uh, the bulk of the attention from the secondaries are going to be focusing on DeAndre Hopkins. Nook's a great player, so we know he's 1,010, but you got to remember, he's one year older. J.J. Watt, to me, I don't know. I think if he really wanted to win a ring, he would have gone to a different team. I don't love him this year. He's an aging superstar, but he's not going to give you the type of production that you're really going to need to go to the next level. Isaiah Simmons, Chandler Jones, these are super good players. I like Simmons. I think the Giants should have taken Simmons coming out of that draft, but I, I like the landing spot where he's at. He's a tackle machine, so their defense isn't horrible. What worries me is that Everybody around them in that division, this is the toughest division in football. Seattle, San Francisco, L.A., this is a bloodbath every single week. They all got better. 
did the Cardinals get better? This is a question you really want to ask yourself. If you got to answer, hit me up at worldofmatchups at outlook.com. I'll be waiting to hear from you on that. Next, the Atlanta Falcons. Let's talk about Matty Ice. A lot of people think Matty Ice is an elite quarterback. I think he falls under the Cam Newton style of quarterbacks, guys that have one really great MVP season, got paid, and then are slowly fading into obscurity. He's still got a great arm. He, 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 he's got good football IQ. He's not a dummy, you know what I mean? But he's not really built. He's not very mobile. And he is about to be singing his swan song shortly after the Roethlisberger's kind of step out and, and move out of the, the NFL. Matty Ice is not too far from that. He did make a lot of money while he was in this league, and I personally kind of feel for the guy because he should have won a Super Bowl. But that's a whole other story. We'll talk about that coach and those play calls a little bit later. I'm not a big fan of Kyle Pitts. I know he is huge. I know he is buff. I know there's a lot of hype around this guy. But take a second and let's think about these freshman tight ends. When was the last time you really saw one blow up? Tony Gonzalez was horrible for years before he ascended and became the monster that he was. You know, maybe Jeremy Shockey. Shockey was pretty good his first year, but it usually takes time for these guys to mature. mature. I mean, Antonio Gates. I don't know. I think people are really kind of putting him on a high pedestal really early. And I understand Julio is gone. There's a lot of targets that are being vacated. I totally understand but let's kind of pump the brake on Pitts until we see what he can do. We know he's a physical specimen. I know he's going to be kind of going up there and just wrestling it away from guys. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot because they're going to be down in a lot of games. The production may be there, but let's take it easy before we start putting him in the TE1 conversation. In fantasy, I would not be taking this guy top five. Next, let's – oh, really quick. I skipped over something super important. Arthur Smith in the defense. Uh, a lot of a lot of the problems that this team is going to have, Spencer, is because they can't stop anybody. You need to be able to stop some people in, in Atlanta. And when your best weapon on offense, aside from your Calvin Ridley's who are putting people on ice skates, and your you know your your Mike Davis's who really did a pretty good job last year for Carolina in the absence of Christian McCaffrey. When, when, when your number one weapon is, is Young Ho Ku, you know, your kicker, who I read somewhere that someone stole his car and his favorite cleats were in the car. And he said, I don't even care about the car. I just want my cleats back. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy. But, I mean, he's like a top, I think, three or four kicker. He's going to get a lot of opportunities. So we don't want to forget about these other ancillary players. But the bottom line, it's going to be, Ridley, Pitts, Matt Ryan. Next, Carolina Panthers. Sam Darnold. I think Sam Darnold got a raw deal. I said it last week. I'm going to continue to say it. I I like Sam Darnold, and I like the fact that he's getting a new lease on life. It kind of reminds me of when Tannehill left Miami. You know what I mean? They didn't give him what he needed. They didn't protect him the way you're supposed to protect your franchise quarterback. And now he's playing with Christian McCaffrey, who makes everybody around him better. I mean, all you got to do is dump the ball off. Christian McCaffrey is an absolute monster. He's the white Marshall Falk, you know, and you don't have scrubs on the outside. You've got good players. You know, DJ Moore is really good. He's going to, he's an ascending player. You know, can we look up DJ Moore stats? I think DJ Moore, the last three or four years might be the quietest top wide receiver to get zero respect in the National Football League. They bring over Robbie Anderson. He's going to be the deep threat. The problem with the Carolina Panthers is that, one, their offensive line is the worst in football. Can you imagine if they had a decent offensive line, what McCaffrey would be doing? And their defense is dreadful. I mean, Cam Irving might be one of the worst offensive linemen in the entire NFL. He's your starting left tackle, I believe. And so... Darnold might be on ice skates back there a lot. He might be running for his life a lot. We, we have to be very, very careful of how many wins we really give this team because they're going to be in a lot of shootouts. And if anything happens to McCaffrey again, he goes down again like he did last year, you're going to see what happens. Mike Davis is gone. It's Chubba Hubbard, who is the backup. Not too many people know about this guy at all. People are just picking him because he's McCaffrey's backup. The, the ascension of Matt Rule – as coach is going to be a little slower because they're 
really implementing a brand new offense with a brand new brand new quarterback. It it just takes time. And you can't really put the kind of plays you want to in place when you centralize your your, your the focus of your offense around just one player. I mean, anything happens to Christian McCaffrey, it's it's over. You know what I mean? They're talking about the Carolina Hurricanes at that point. It's it's it's, it's over. Player to watch. I like this kid, Terrence Marshall Jr. He's going to be a stud in this league. He'll be a wide out number three, fast, lengthy, very, very quick on his feet, runs good routes. I would I'd keep my eye on him. I'm going to say for the Carolina Panthers, I'm going to give them I'm going to give them six wins. They're the type of team last year that I watched that they really weren't that great, but they were in a lot of games late. They pushed Kansas City. They pushed Kansas City in Kansas City. Kansas City should have lost that game. They lost that game on a field goal. So that shows you that they have talent. Just putting it all together is not that easy. Next. Well, uh, before, oh, kick it. sorry about that. Yep. I just wanted to say on DJ Moore, his last two seasons, 1,175 yards, and in 2020, 1,193 yards. And uh, just quickly, in my opinion, it all you know rides and dies on Sam Darnold. You got, uh, is he marginally better than Teddy Bridgewater? I'm not sure. I mean, he's been terrible so far in his career. We'll find out if it's a thing of location or if he really is just that bad. Yeah, the question is, is why has he been terrible? Because I remember people saying the same thing about a guy like Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. I mean, the Jets, I just don't think they gave him enough. Now, when I look at the quarterback rankings for a guy like Sam Donald, he's number 32. I think he's better than Drew Locke. I mean, my goodness. You know, he's dead last. And so he's got a lot to prove. And it's going to come week one when he faces his former team. I, I love Carolina in that game. I don't care what the point spread is. I don't care where they play that game. They could play that game in the Grab It television parking lot. He's going to be fired up for that game. You know, when you get traded or released from a team, that just gets filed in the back of your head. You never forget that. That's going to be game to watch, even though it's going to be two really bad teams going at it. Next. The Bears. We are coming to you live from Dicka's here on Thanksgiving Day, a day for giving thanks for or taking punishment from a team that is known as the Bears. The Bears. I got a lot of I got a lot of friends who are Bear fans. Shout out Tran. Shout out David Miller. Shout out Rachel Potetit. My Bears fans are so faithful. Man, I, I just love you guys because no matter how bad they are, you, you can't tell them nothing. Like, you cannot tell them nothing about their team. So, number one, Andy Dalton, to me, should not be starting for this team. I have never in my life seen a worst, under-the-lights, big-game player. Monday night football, Sunday night football, this guy just stinks up the joint. He's terrible. Now, he did a lot for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was marginal for the Dallas Cowboys. They bring him over this year to start. I could see a situation where week one they play the Rams. They get their doors blown off and enter Justin Fields. I think this was one of the biggest steals in the NFL draft, and I like this kid. Justin Fields, he doesn't say much. He's just quiet. I've been kind of watching how he's going about his business. He's just like, okay, just wait, wait my turn. You know what I mean? And, and I think when he gets on the field, it's going to be on. Be careful with this Dalton. Dalton, look, do you, want to, do you want to grow or do you want to go? If you draft these guys, you got to let them play. I'm always going to be a big supporter of throwing them out there and taking their lumps. They say Andy Dalton gives them the best chance to win. I think Aaron Donald might have something to say about that, but it's going to be an interesting week one. I, I love David Montgomery. His ascension last year at the end of the year, albeit it was softer teams that they were playing, was huge. He's always been good, I believe. I always think he's kind of one of the biggest sleeper running backs in the NFL this year. A-Rob is great. The guy had 14 touchdowns in Jacksonville. I think he had like 10 touchdowns last year. This guy's never, ever, ever had a good quarterback. I don't think he had a good quarterback in high school. He's never had a good quarterback, and he puts up these kind of numbers. Imagine this guy catching the ball from Justin Fields. He is a stud. Don't, don't fool yourself. A-Rob is top 10. Okay, A lot of people don't want to give him his flowers, and they need to start recognizing this. Khalil Mack is still there. The defense is always solid. The Raiders called inquiring about getting Mack back. So you, 
which is crazy to me. They should have never let him go in, in the first place, but that's a whole nother story. He's still there. He's still good. Soldier Field, it's cold. It's 10 degrees. It's snowing. You know what I mean? Even the Packers, when they go there sometimes, it's a fight. It's not a walk. A, it's not a, a, a walk in the park, okay? Matt Nagy. Matt Nagy and Cliff Kingsbury, to me, are going to be the two quarterbacks I would bet money on right now that will be fired first this year. He just tries too hard to be this Andy Reid clone. And sometimes you just don't have the pieces to put this kind of personnel in the positions that you want to make things happen. The bottom line is if you're really trying to ascend and bring this franchise from the futility that it's been having recently, you got to start just a field. You got to start this guy. Let this guy play. He is an absolute stud. They have a sleeper. Remember this name, Cole Komet. Nobody knows too much about this guy, K-M-E-T. Okay, he's out of Notre Dame. He's going to be the tight end of the future. Jimmy Graham, is a gr he's a grandpa. I mean, get this guy off the team. He's not even good enough to block anymore. anymore. Cole Komet, sleeper. I give the Bears seven games. I give them two of those seven wins simply off their defense alone. And if they let Justin Fields spin like they should, you're going to see a lot of highlights coming out of Chicago this year. You don't believe in the Ohio State quarterback curse? I, I mean, don't. I don't believe in curses, period. I don't believe in the Madden curse. I don't believe in the quarterback curse. I just believe talent rises to the top. And I think a lot of times when it comes time for NFL quarterbacks, it's the fit. It's the system. Do you end up in the right place? Everyone loves Patrick Mahomes. But I don't think people give Andy Reid his flowers enough for – why Patrick Mahomes is so good. It's all about where you land. And I can't think of a better place for this kid to have landed. They have stars. Montgomery's a star. Abrob's a star. They just need someone to pay the check. And that's what Justin Fields is going to be. Matt Nagy is known as the quarterback whisperer. So yeah, we'll see. we'll see. You know what I mean? Who has he whispered so far? That's my question. You know what I mean? Last time I checked, Mitchell Trubisky was working at in and out Burger. Next. Dallas Cowboys, the team everyone loves to hate. First of all, I just got to get this off my chest. Everyone talks about this team like it's America's team. The only people I know that really love the Cowboys are from Dallas. So can we stop with this America's team stuff? I, I don't see it. I don't understand it. And I was never a big fan of this Mike McCarthy guy at all. I don't like him for this team. Now, I like the team. I don't like him. Dak, major injury last year. Shoulder problems going in. Now the whispers that are coming out of camp are going to be, he's going to be okay. He's all right. We're just not going to push Dak. We gave him his money. We overpaid him. So now we got to baby him. Offensive line's returning a couple starters. They're going to be okay. Everybody just be worried about Dak. Everybody take a deep breath. I can't stand it anymore. I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Stewardess, please, let me handle this. I've got to get out of here. Calm down. Now get back to your seat. I'll take care of this. Calm down. Calm down. Get a hold of yourself. Dak's going to be fine, Dallas. And Dak's going to be good. Why? Because he's surrounded by talent. This team's offense is probably going to be top three. Amari Cooper, I don't love Amari Cooper, but there's no denying his talent. As much as I hate him, he's a 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb. I've loved this guy ever since the draft room. He was in the draft room with his girlfriend. His girlfriend tried to pick up the phone. He's like, no, no, no. Give me that phone. <laughs> I was like, this guy's going to be a G. And the talent is there. The talent is on the year. There's no deny. I can't wait to run some C.D. Lamb highlights for you guys this year because this guy is going to be an absolute monster. He is destroying everyone in camp. He is learning how to run routes. He's learning how to maneuver his body to not get jammed. He's going to be good. Gallup. Gallup is like a number one on a lot of teams. He's their number three. Okay? They have weapons. And then let's talk about Zeke. I'm kind of torn where I am about Zeke. Got fat. You know what I mean? They didn't have the best year. O-line went down. You know, you're out there playing with who at quarterback. You know, Dak goes down. So now the box is getting stacked. You know, it kind of was one of those years that will have you saying, I will never draft Zeke again. I, they need to get rid of Zeke. His cap hit is so high. Oh, my goodness. We're married to this guy. However, 
I've been watching a little bit of Hard Knocks. You know what I mean? And I always love the Hard Knocks stuff because they give you a little bit more than you're going to get from the reporters. You actually see a little bit more. Zeke's slimmed down. You know, people are saying he's in the best shape of his entire career. He's nothing but smiles. Look, folks, we got to remember that Zeke pre-last year was an absolute beast. He catches the ball out of the backfield. He doesn't give up sacks. He passive protects great. And he, in, inside the red zone, you know what's going to happen. This is a proven commodity that we need to remember who he is. Now, if he repeats what happened last year, we're going to have a different conversation going into this next year. But I think Zeke is going to still be a proven runner. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to be a 9 or 10 win team. The problem I have with them is that their defense is trash. It's complete bustler up. Um, I, there's just no other way to say it. They're going to be in a lot of shootouts, which they can win because they got they got talent. You know what I mean? Sean Lee retires. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Lee's body retired five years ago. You know, But we wish him well in retirement. I am concerned about them being able to stop anyone. They don't have anybody that can pick up the other team's number one receiver. Coming out of the backfield, you know, the wideouts and wide receivers are going to be feasting in the middle of the field. Is, is Van Der Esch still there? I mean, he's one of those guys that's always hurt, too. It's concerning for to have that great of an offense and that bad of a defense and to not address it the, really the way it needs to. I mean, I understand they had to take C.D. Lamb. You guys are idiots that didn't pick C.D. Lamb, and you let him. You just let him fall. You let him fall. I said to myself, I'm like, oh, my God, is Dallas really going to take C.D. Lamb? They don't need him. You know, but if he's there, you have to take him, and you guys are going to pay for that. You know what I mean? You're going to pay. Blake Jarwin got hurt last year. Sleeper, Dalton Schultz, he was good, stepped in, but I'm telling you, sleeper, Blake Jarwin, he, the problem with Blake Jarwin is he may not see the amount of balls he needs to see because there's just so many mouths to feed. But at the end of the day, America's team, a not America's team, I like the Cowboys, especially in that weak, weak division. That's a division that them, them and the, the Washington football team, they should slug that out, Rocky and Apollo style, for a lot of years to come. Next, the Detroit Lions. <sighs> wow. The Detroit Lions are the new factory of sadness. It used to be the Browns. Um, it's the Lions, and it sucks. You know what I mean? Because that that that's a proud city that deserves better. You know, and they really haven't done much since Megatron, since Barry Sanders. It's been pretty. It's, they've been perennially bad. It's been bad. So they get Goff. You know what I mean? Goff gets ousted, and and they couldn't. Let me tell you, Sean McVay could not wait to get rid of Jared Goff. Oh my stars! He could not wait. They they, they would have given him up for nothing. Okay, so now he's on a team. They got DeAndre Swift. They got Jamal Williams. You know what I mean? They got these little scat backs. You know, their problem with them is that, you know, they're they're going to be down in so many games. I mean, how many red zone opportunities are the Detroit Lions going to have? They have no decent wide receivers now that Galladay went to the Giants. Galladay couldn't wait to get out of there either. I mean, what is it about Detroit besides the fact that they're bad? Like, is it their coaching? I think Matt Patricia really – Matt Patricia for the Detroit Lions was like sour milk. And then he left. You know what I mean? And now NFL players are like, why would we want to deal with that? Like, it's just, it's it's bad. It's really bad. TJ Hawkinson's a bright spot. I think he's going to have a good year. He showed flashes last year. I think he'll be tight end three or four this year. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Expect him to have a nice season. Health is always an issue, but hopefully he can stay healthy. I like Jeff Akuda. They drafted him, got hurt. You know, there are some bright spots. There's some things to hang your hat on, but they're just going to need more than what they're able to produce right now. You know, Dan Campbell, you know, I, I, I have doubts of him being a, caliber, a high caliber NFL coach at any point in his career. I mean, these rah rah guys, these guys that like to put on pads and go out there and, and hit with the players, that's all well and good. But like, talent. Scheming, play, drawing up plays, you know, making proper decisions. That that stuff is what matters, and I just don't see it happening in 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 Detroit. Anthony Lynn is now their OC. That's all you need to know. Um, Anthony Lynn was a cancer for the Chargers last year. Now he's in. Now he's in Detroit. You know what I mean? We went from stomach cancer to like testicular cancer. Now who knows? You know, I like the guy personally as a coach, but it just didn't work out. 
and now he's OCO there. We'll see what he can do with golf. Golf is not as bad as everyone thinks he is. You know, go back and look at the 54-50 game that he won versus Kansas City on Monday night. I mean, golf has been – he's – if you if you protect golf and put him in positions to win, he's not a horrible quarterback. I can name worse quarterback. The problem with golf is if you get near him where he starts hearing whispers, it's, oh, it's, it's a pick six. You know what I mean? Like, he really needs a fortress. I don't know really how good the offensive line is going to be for Detroit either. So that might be something to look forward to watching how that, you know, maneuvers itself. You know, I like Deuce Staley as AC and running back coach. You know, Deuce Staley, the former former Eagle, is getting his shot in the NFL, and, and I'm glad that someone's finally giving him his flowers because he's paying his dues. I think that the Detroit Lions, honestly, you guys need to give up that Thanksgiving Day game. I, I, I think it's, I have a perfect – here. here is a perfect idea. You have a brand new stadium here in Las Vegas. You give the Raiders that game. You know how many people would come to Las Vegas and go to that game? Give them, give that game to the Raiders. You know what I mean? They are bad every year. They lose every year. They're the first game every year because most people are waking up from a hangover the night before, so they're like, oh, the Lions, you know what I mean? You get your you get your hors d'oeuvres out of the way, and then you watch the Cowboys. You know what I mean? Like, they need, they need to give that game up. Roger Goodell, holler at me if you think that's a good idea. The Lions have one playoff win in their team history. Bro. One playoff one. win in their team history. I mean, I think the Texans even have more than that. They're only like 20-something years old. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. You know what I mean? Like, they just keep putting a Band-Aid on bullet wounds year after year after year. Next, the Green Bay Packers. My goodness, what a soap opera Aaron Rodgers has been. What a narcissistic prick this guy is. I'm not a big fan of this guy. I've never in my life seen anything like it. His press conference, when he came back to the team, and I told you all, first of all, I'm going to put this out because y'all were all like, he's getting traded to Denver, he's coming to Las Vegas. No, he's not going anywhere because he's not giving back $23 million. Y'all didn't want to listen to me, and now he's back. And has his press conference and players only come to Green Bay to play with me. Okay, dude, that might be true. But my goodness, this is a team sport. Has anybody seen an athlete more full of themselves than Aaron Rodgers? I will wait. And let's keep it 100, bro. If you're that good, you only have one ring. Big Ben's got more rings than you. And now we know Big Ben's got his old set of problems too, but... Humility, man, it looks good. Can we bring it down a notch? Your, your career is about to be open. Your legacy should rest on you staying with that team your whole career. And you just, they keep putting the fire out and you just keep lighting it. Now, the team is not without fault, and we'll get to them in a second. Devontae Adams, touchdown monster. He is an unstoppable force inside the red zone. 14, 15 touchdowns every single year is not out of the equation for Devontae Adams. At all. He's got speed, he's got size, and he's got a quarterback that can get him the ball. But best believe he would not have come back this year if Aaron Rodgers didn't come back. So the two of them are coming back. They're trying to do their little swan song. They'll try to milk another. They might stay, or depending on what happens this year, they might try to milk another contract somewhere else. All right? They've got a great offense. Aaron Jones, one of the most underrated running backs in the entire league. Period. End of story. The guy just doesn't get his just due. He can catch a ball out of the backfield. He'll see more balls thrown his way now that Jamal Williams has been jettisoned to Detroit. They bring in A.J. Dillon, battering ram. The guy's like 400 pounds back there. He's like the fridge inside the five. If that guy gets the ball, just put your hands up, ref, because it's going to be a touchdown. But I think that this could be the last year that these guys all play together. Now, the problem I have with them is that they're too predictable. They're just too predictable. You know, coach, draw up some plays. I mean, I know they're not, you know, super athletic, but they get the job done. They can score. And they have no defense. <laughs> Another team that's just got no defense. You know how many rings this team would have if they had half the defense as the San Francisco 49ers? They just don't have anybody that could stop anybody. And I'm here to tell you, folks, they are about to be first to worst real soon here. Again. They're going to win 12 games this year. They're going to light it up on the field. They're going to be great for fantasy. They're going to be great for, for, for daily 
DFS. They're going to be great for betting. And in the playoffs, they're going to get their doors blown off. If they don't have home fuel advantage and someone has to travel to Green Bay, they are going to go to San Francisco. They are going to go to LA. They're going to go somewhere and they're going to get beat because this team, more than any other team in the NFL, is not the same on the road. They have these ancillary pieces, MVS, Alan Lazard. These are good players, okay? They're good players. But at the end of the day, you have to stop somebody on third down, and they're not physical. They're finesse. Go back and look at some of their playoff losses the last two, the last two years, three years. When they go into San Francisco, they have no shot at winning. No shot. They're, they go in there wearing gaiters. And, and, and like the Niners are wearing Tims. It's, it's no fight. They get destroyed. And it's not all Aaron Rodgers' fault. It's not. We have to take a look at the Packer Brass, how they've drafted. What have they given him? They haven't given him anything. And so while I think he is, you know, public enemy number one, you know, he does have a legit beef. You know, the front office has it. What have they given him? You know, I mean, they haven't really been a serious threat since Jordy Love left. In the last um, 10 years, only one time have they not – they've drafted uh, a defensive player – in every single draft except for one year, and it was Jordan Love. That was the only player that was not in the fir- their first round pick in defense, and yet the defense is still that bad. That's terrible. They're just picking the wrong guys. They're just picking the wrong guys. We all know they could score. You know what I mean? They can throw a punch, but when they get punched in the mouth, they fold like a house of cards like no other team. And I promise you, you can come to the show. You can come on the show. You can call me during the show. They are going to have a good year. They're going to go to the playoffs. If they don't have home field advantage, they're going to go somewhere, and they are going to get murked. Next, Los Angeles Rams. I like this team. I like them more now that they have Matt Stafford. I like them a lot. I like Sean McVay. I like him. I like, I like the fact that he's a younger coach. I like his enthusiasm. I don't think that – I don't like how they did golf. They did golf dirty. I understand this is a business, you know what I mean? But they never were behind golf. and The way they handled it, I think, was was poor. But he, to me, kind of reminds me of, like, the mind of, like, a young Andy Reid, always trying to get creative. The plays are nice, end of rounds, you know, a lot of tiptoeing, a lot of very um, well-crafted out plays. And they have the defense. So this this is a, a balanced team, okay? So Matt Stafford comes in. This is going to be, I think, a huge upgrade. Matthew Stafford, to me, is one of the toughest sons of guns in the whole National Football League. There's some highlights of him on YouTube that you can bring up where he separated his shoulder, came out, went back in, scored, won the game. I mean, he is as tough as nails, and I think that Detroit never really took care of him the way they needed to, and that's a shame. He gets a a second lease on life, kind of reminds me of Tannehill getting a second lease on life in Tennessee, and off we go. They lose Cam Akers. Uh, you know, it just kind of happens every year. A stud goes down. He'll be back, but that's a huge hole to fill. You know what I mean? So they have Daryl Henderson, who I, I don't love. A lot of people love this guy. You know, they bring over Sony Michelle. Now they just have a bunch of C-plus running backs. You know, Xavier Jones might be good, but he's never going to really see the field. And so they're going to be throwing the ball all over the field. Bounce back player of the year is going to be Cooper Cup. I love me some Cooper Cup. You can't tell me nothing about Cooper Cup. He's the great white hope. You know what I mean? He's this this generation's Jordy Nelson. He is a great, great player. Robert Woods is super slept on, end of rounds. You know, he can do a lot too. You know, he's one of those guys that is a thousand yards and six touchdowns really quietly every single year. So they're gonna be good. I like Higby. They're gonna be really, really good. But let's talk about the beast. Aaron. Donald, oh my goodness, in this base 3-4 defense, Aaron Donald is unstoppable, he's unguardable, I mean, look at some of these plays, look where he's coming from, I mean, it's unbelievable, he's not just tackling guys, he is breaking guys off, look at that, he threw Josh Allen down like a child, Josh Allen is 6'6", 250, Aaron Donald is an unbel- un- he is the most unstoppable force in the National Football League. It's unbelievable, and it doesn't matter if you put two guys on him. It doesn't matter if you put three guys on him. Aaron Donald's getting through. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, oh, 
I haven't seen this kind of domination from a defensive player since Lawrence Taylor. And they know it. And a lot of times he plays hurt. And he's still doing this. For a player at this position to have 20-plus sacks, I mean, it's almost a crime that you can't put him in the MVP race because we know that this is an offensive league. But Aaron Donald's an absolute beast, and they're playing the Bears here in this highlight. Uh, you Bears fans, this is what's coming to you week one. I'm telling you right now. Say your prayer. Hey, look at that. He's hitting guys so hard, Spencer, that the ball is always coming out. It's always coming out. It's not just a sack. It's a, hello, my name is Aaron Donald. Get used to being down there. You know what I mean? One of the best players. I think he's a top five player in the entire league on any position. You, this is the type of player that you start a team with. And this is what I'm talking about when you see teams like Cincinnati Bengals. They just draft all offense. You need a guy like this. you got to have a guy like this. You know what I mean? you got to have a Chase Young. You have to have a player on defense that can galvanize your team that the other team will know there's no easy scores. There's no easy scores ever. And if you look at these highlights, these are versus top comp- – this is top competition. Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. Look, it's scary. So – if your offensive line isn't intact, it's over. It is 100% over. I bet you Tom Brady's happy he's not seeing this guy at, his, at this step of the – I mean, I'm, I'm sure Patrick Mahomes is like, oh, my God, I'm not, I'm not in that division. You know what I mean? Imagine having to see Aaron Donald twice a year. My goodness. Jalen Ramsey, solid on defense too. I mean, we can't forget how good Jalen Ramsey was, and we know he – he pushed his way out of Jacksonville, but I mean, you have a player of that caliber in your secondary, and you have a player of of that caliber on your D line. I mean, they're going to be a number one defense. I think they'll be top three this year, and I think they're going to be in a lot of games. And if that, if if Matthew Stafford can do what I think he can do, they're going to be a playoff team. They're going to be tough. They got a brand new stadium. I mean, it's all there. You got a brand new stadium. You great coach, great D, great O. It's just sad because like. They have no real home field advantage. I mean, like, does anyone really know a Rams fan? You know what I mean? Let's let's keep it a buck. Do we does anyone know a Rams fan? And 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 that stadium is basically a home field for the visiting team. It doesn't matter. When the when the Raiders go there, when the Chiefs go there, all those teams Pittsburgh goes there, all those, you know, teams that have traveling, heavy, heavy traveling fans, you look in the stadium and it's like 60-40 for the visiting team. Sucks. Tough division, but I think they're going to win that division, and I really like them because they got Matt Stafford. All right, guys, that's the first eight. We're going to break to a commercial, and we are going to come back with the next eight, and following that, we are going to have our special guest, Mr. Alexander Ganim, our local here from Las Vegas, Mr. Eagle himself, breaking down what we think is going to happen in the National Football League with a concentration on the NFC this season. My name is Dexter Reed. And hang in there with us. This is World of Matchups. What's new on Grab It TV? Absolutely everything. We've got daily news shows, sports, weather, comedy, inspirational shows, fast cars, and a whole lot more. If you aren't watching Grab It TV, you're really missing out. It's free for you and free from censorship. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe today. All right, everybody, welcome back to World of Matchups. My name is Dexter Reed, and we are ready for the second half of the NFC breakdown. But before we do that, we'd be amiss if we didn't mention a huge thanks to our newest silver sponsor, Jason Guilford Jones of Massachusetts. Jason, we thank you for showing into World of Matchups the way you have. Making these productions takes money, and it's people like you that help keep us afloat. Thank you, and we hope you continue to enjoy the NFL content that we pump out now till Super Bowl Sunday. All right, the breakdown. Next, Minnesota Vikings. We'll start off with Kirk Cousins. So a lot of people give Kirk Cousins a a lot of hell. I think Kirk Cousins is serviceable. Is he overpaid? Yes, there's a lot of overpaid quarterbacks. He, to me, was a better quarterback with Washington because you really got to showcase him and see him have to use his arm to win. Now he kind of rests on his laurels a little bit because he's got solid running game with Dalvin Cook. He's got solid running game with Alexander Madison. He's protected a little bit better. Do I think the Vikings can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins? Absolutely not. For a lot of different reasons, I just don't think he's a winner. I think he's more of a stat guy, but he's a serviceable quarterback. He's a good quarterback. So they draft Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson. 
Justin Jefferson, this kid is a beast. You know, the NFL is moving into this era where it's about technicians at wide receiver. It's no longer the Andre Johnsons or the Megatrons. It's a bunch of six foot 190 guys like Justin Jefferson who can cut, who can catch, who, if you put the ball and give it to him in the right position in space, he's going to blow up. You know, they don't miss Stefan Diggs at all. Stefan Diggs was a pain in the neck for them. Now they got Justin Jefferson. This guy's going to be a top 10 wide receiver for a long, long time. Guys, don't sleep on Adam Thielen. The feel-good story's not over. The guy caught 14 touchdowns last year on, like, 70 balls. He is still a good receiver. He's another great white hope. They don't give him, give, him, give him his flowers like they need to. He's a solid receiver. So you got guys who are great on the end. They're going to try to work in Irv Smith this year. He'll be kind of a sleeper. And I think that if you really pay attention to what they do, it's all about getting guys the ball in space. And look, Dalvin Cook, this might be the year that Dalvin Cook ascends to RB1. I mean, I know it's all about McCaffrey and McCaffrey and McCaffrey, but don't sleep on Dalvin Cook. The problem I have with Dalvin Cook is he just can't stay healthy. He just can't stay healthy. If Dalvin Cook plays 16 games, he could score 16, 17 touchdowns and have 1,500 yards. I mean, don't forget, we got an extra game this year, guys. we got that extra game. That matters. Defense, they bring in Patrick Peterson, who I think is not so much washed up, but he's on his way. Rashad Breeland comes over from Kansas City. I never liked Breeland, but he's more than serviceable. So these are upgrades at the corner and safety positions that will really help them. They've got a great old line. You see the holes these guys make. For guys like Madison and Cook, they got an average defense. Mike Zimmer's a good coach, but the balance is lacking. It's more 60-40, 70-30 than it needs to be 50-50. And in a big spot, if they're down 10 points, the game is over. They have a pretty good home field advantage. I talk to people who are Vikings fans for years, and for, they're kind of like the – they were kind of like the version of the Kansas City Chiefs, the NFC version of the Kansas City Chiefs, like for years. No matter what the Chiefs did in the playoffs, they would find ways to lose. They would just blow it if it was a botched field goal or a fumble. They just never got over the hump. And then finally, Kansas City got Mahomes, they got Andy Reid, and they got a ring. The same thing, I think, is eventually going to happen for the Minnesota Vikings because they have, a, they have enough talent. They have good coaches. They just can't stop somebody when it matters. And I think it's going to bite them again this year. I would give them nine, nine and a half, ten wins. You know, they're good enough for that. If guys like Justin Jefferson continue to ascend and, you know, the defense is a little bit better and can make some stops, get to the other team's quarterback, maybe 11 wins, but not much more than that. I don't hate them, but I don't love them either. They're just kind of one of those run-of-the-mill teams that I think will, will be playing in the NFL. They'll get their fans excited, and then when the time comes, they'll let them down as always. Next, the New Orleans Saints. Let me tell you something. When I used I used to work for the NFL, I used to be a chef for the NFL grounds crew, and I went to the what was it the Super Bowl that had the Niners when they when the lights went out. You remember that one versus the Ravens? Let me tell you something. New Orleans is one of the most amazing places I've ever been in my entire life. And let me tell you something. These people they absolutely love their Saints. You can't if you go down there and you start talking smack about their Saints, you're gonna end up in a swamp tour somewhere. Like you will just come up missing. You can't tell them nothing. They are fabulous fans. They got a fabulous fan base. The Superdome is a cool place to be. I just enjoyed that experience wholeheartedly. And they have talent. Jameis Winston gets named the starting quarterback. This was the right move to make. Sean Payton's no dummy. Sean Payton has balls. We all know that Taysom Hill is the 2021 version of Tim Tebow. This guy's not a real NFL quarterback. And when it counts, you see it. He turns into a pumpkin. What I have a problem with is why did you give him such an insane contract? That guy is stealing more money than anybody in the National Football League. Period. End of statement. And I will never back off that. So I like Winston. He slimmed down. Drew Brees passes the torch. It all happens the proper way. Dude, Alvin Kamar is an absolute nightmare. He's a nightmare to deal with. This is the six. I mean, the guy scored six touchdowns in a game. Look at the hole he ran through here. They have a solid O line. I mean, this guy's a stud. Folks, Alvin Kamara catches 80 balls a year. 80 balls. Write it in. That is more than most wide receivers. That's like DeAndre Hopkins' numbers. 
and he can move. His vision is great. He's hard to bring down. I mean, toe taps. Like, what, what do you want Alvin Kamara to do? He is the Swiss Army knife of NFL running backs. And he's on a team that's got a great line that is going to feature him. Sean Payton will give Alvin Kamara the ball like 50 times if it means I'm going to win this game. What do you want him to do? And so you've got this guy who is pretty much an unstoppable force. They're not going to miss Drew Brees. Let's be honest. Drew Brees' noodle arm was done years ago. Okay. And is there a more overrated quarterback of all time than Drew Drew Brees? That's a whole nother story. And don't get me wrong. I like Drew Brees. But he's got one ring. There's a lot of things Drew Brees never did. But that's a whole nother story. Okay. Michael Thomas. I have a problem with how this went down. The guy was recommended to have surgery months ago. Months ago. Doesn't have surgery. Comes into camp. Now he's hurt. And he's out. Bro. Where's, where's where's the disconnect with the communication here? Like, we need you to play now. When you were in Cancun, you should have had surgery. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand what happened there. I think my, I think Michael Thomas's days of being a wide out number one are over. It was all him in the slot. It was all Drew, Drew Brees. It's over. Even if he comes back and he's a fraction of what he used to be, dude, other players are ascending. You know, Marcus Callaway is a good player. These it's amazing how short your time in the NFL can be. You know, and Jameis Winston is a different kind of quarterback than Drew Brees. He's, he's a bomb quarterback. Jameis Winston's trying to throw the ball 50 yards downfield. He's not a slot guy. He's not a dump-off guy, although he's going to have to be because Kamara's too good to just be left out in the flat. So I'm not too sure about Michael Ta- Thomas, but I like this kid Callaway. Look at some of his highlights in his last preseason game. The guy is going over the top. I mean, the ball is going up. Top, like I haven't seen in the NFL. Watch out for this guy. Base 4 3 D. Cam Jordan's a monster. Malcolm Jenkins is still good, even though I know he is old. You've got to have the field general back there. You know he's going to give you what you need. He's going to be barking out orders. He's a coach in the in the secondary. These things are important in the NFL. You got to have that guy back there, or else someone's going to get burnt. That rookie DB that doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing right now because he was out drinking too late last night. Michael Jenkins is like, dude, get get your ass where you need to be. That's important, okay? And so I like the Saints. I don't love the Saints. I don't love the Saints. And I think that the Saints have never been the same since the Rams' blown call in the playoffs. They just haven't been the same. I've never seen a situation like that hurt a team so badly to the point that they never really recovered. And if you go talk to any Saints fans, you go down there and mention that, dude, they're still not over it. You want to be, you want to talk about like not getting over a breakup. That, that's it. And I honestly, the Rams didn't belong in that Super Bowl. And I think if the Saints would have gone, I think the Saints would have won. I think the Saints would have won. I think the Super Bowl everybody wanted to see was Saints Kansas City. And, and we didn't get it, and and that's a shame. Sean Payton, Bounty Gate, we 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 can't overlook the Bounty Gate. I'm never gonna get over that. You know that that will keep me from liking Sean Payton the way I could like him. But one of the most gutsy calls I've ever seen in my life was in the Super Bowl coming out of the half where he went for the onside kick versus Peyton Manning and the Indianapolis Colts. Folks, that game was over at that point. You got to hear what I'm saying. That game was over. That's one of the gutsiest calls I've ever seen. And he will make these calls. For that reason, I still give him a little love, but I'm not a fan of going after other players and trying to take their livelihood away. The uh, bottom line is this is a game, and we're not looking to hurt anybody. We're just looking to win. Next. The New York Giants, New York football Giants, the Gents. I'm from New York. I rooted for this team growing up. Bill Sims, Jeff, Jeff Hostetler, you know. The Giants are number one, Super Bowl 21. I still got the song in my head. You know what I mean? 13, 14 years old. But now I'm 48, and things are different, and um, I'm not really high on this team. I'm still waiting for someone to give me a reason to like Daniel Jones, tell me why they drafted Daniel Jones. I know he can run, but he makes poor decisions. He makes some of the most horrible throws I've ever seen. I think he kind of really wants to be the white Cam Newton, you know, or just run a lot. That 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 highlight, I should have asked you to pull up that highlight, Spencer, that one last year. I think it was versus the Eagles where he just ran like 70 yards and then just fell over himself. 
I mean, like that summed up like their entire season. It was just bad, you know. And then Saquon Barkley, who is just an absolute monster. Oh my goodness, have you ever seen Saquon Barkley's? Have you ever take a, a look at his calves, bro? His calves are like the size of my body. The guy's nickname is Quads. He's coming back from a major injury. They're slowly bringing him along, which will scare a lot of people in San Fantasy because he's a number one talent, you know, and that schedule this year is going to scare people. And all of a sudden, you're going to see Saquon Barkley in round three. Like, what? What? Dude, Saquon Barkley's a monster. Don't, don't believe the hype. Okay? Now, major injury. Will he be the same? That's the question. But they're bringing him back slow. They bring in Galladay. I'm one of those people that think Galladay should have left. He should have left. You know, you could have held the Detroit Lions ransom hostage and gotten whatever you want. And Detroit might be the type of people, you know, team that might actually be good here eventually. I don't know. But I don't like Galladay on the Giants. And now he's hurt. You know what I mean? To me, Evan Ingram is a bum. Is there a more overrated tight end in the National Football League? I mean, his name sounds cool. So I think people are like, oh, Evan Ingram. Oh, Evan. What has he done? He's done nothing the last couple of years. He has been borderline average at best. And so you have. This offense that has promised, but it never really kind of comes together, whether it's injuries or, you know, the offensive line can't block. Who knows? What I like about them is that their defense is slowly coming along. I really like Blake Martinez. I really like Jabril Preppers. I like this defense. They're young. They're hungry. I mean, it ain't going to be the defense of old. You know what I mean? When you had LT back there, you know, but like they're coming along. They are. A, they are. A, a, they're like a lunch pail defense. There's no big stars on a defense, but they can ball. Nate Soldier's coming back. Andrew Thomas drafted. It's going to be another year with him. Offensive line should be better. They should be able to protect Daniel Jones a little bit better. Folks, this is a make or break year for Daniel Jones. You know what I mean? Like, dude, you got to show us something here in New York. Okay? They had a really big win last year at Seattle. You fly 3,000 miles across the country and you win at the 12th man. That's a huge game. That, that, that win knocked me out of my pool. And so I won't forget that one. I, I, I tell you, anytime I get knocked out of these pools, man, it's always Seattle that just killed it. And we're going to talk about the Seahawks in a minute because I can't tell you how many times they've, they've let me down. But, but the Giants have promise is what I'm saying. There is promise. I think they could win seven games. I really do. You know, a couple of years ago when Denver was really, really good and the Giants were really, really bad, they went to Denver and they won that game. The Giants are the type of team that – are sneaky on the road. They'll go and they'll win a road game that no one sees coming at all. They're immature. They're undisciplined. They're fighting in camp. Daniel Jones is at the bottom of the pile. What if Daniel Jones gets hurt at the bottom of a pile of a preseason scrum? What? Joe Judge, bro, you got to fall back and you got to get your team together here, man. They cannot be this undisciplined and have something like that almost happen. That is un. You lose your job over something like that. The guy's your franchise quarterback. You treat him like, forget the red jersey. He walks around in bubble tape. Now he's at the bottom of a scrum. You think Andy Reid would ever have Patrick Mahomes doing that? I think they have, I think the Kansas City Chiefs have eyes on Mahomes at all times, except when he's in his house. This guy is making a lot of money. Daniel Jones, you have to protect him better. Do a better job, Joe Judge. Next. The Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles. It's Jalen Hurts' time, okay? Now, I, I, I don't hate this team. I don't love this team. I have a lot of problems with this team. I think one of the greatest Super Bowl wins I've ever seen was Nick Foles pulling it out versus the Patriots. I thoroughly enjoyed that game. It's been a while since I didn't have a dog in the fight of a major Super Bowl where like, I was pulling so hard for a team. But it's been kind of downhill since then. It hasn't been great. Okay, there's a couple things that I have problems with. So you got Miles Sanders in Boston, Scott. I think Miles Sanders is the most overrated running back in the National Football League. It's either a big run of 70 yards or a three-yard loss. It's just that simple. And I believe that RBBC in this division, it's gonna be tough. I mean, Boston Scott was he five foot nine. You know what I mean? I mean, I get that you're small and you're powerful and you can catch. But I don't love those guys, not with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is going to make hay with his legs. That's what he does. You know what I mean? And so are we going to see the dump-offs we need to see? Are we going to see the kind of plays that you need to see with that kind of personnel from Nick Sirianni? Do we even know who this guy is? He sounds like somebody out of a Rocky movie. 
You know what I mean? Like the the body of work is really not there. So it's a little concerning, right? Now, you, you get Devonta Smith, who is a stud. I don't care what anyone says. Devonta Smith is a stud. S-T-U-D. Stud. But he's 175 pounds soaking wet. Soaking wet. This is going to be a problem in the NFL. This ain't college. You know, these DBs, they're not trying to tackle you. They are trying to take you out. So I would put them on the prison diet, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and ramen. You put on 20 more pounds of muscle. Now we're working with something. But there's no doubt that the guy is talented. But can they get him a ball? I mean, this all looks great here. This is college. This is college. You know what I mean? Can you get him the ball? I just think he's the new Deshaun, new Deshaun Jackson. It's either going to be boom or bust, but it's all about Jalen Hurts. O-line is meh. Defense is meh. But there's a sleeper that a lot of people don't like on this team that I like, and that's Jalen Rieger. He can go up and get it. He can go up and get it. Zach Ertz, he's still good. Dallas Goddard, he's still good. There's weapons, okay? There's weapons. But what's going to hurt this team is going to be their defense. Darius Slay has not been the same since he came over from the Lions. The guy's washed. Steven Nelson is not an NFL caliber D-back. He's, he's trash, and I can tell you that from personal experience. I know this personally. It's a reason when you see a DB on a different NFL team every single year, Okay. The problem that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to have is that they're going to give up big chunks of yards every single year, you know, and, and, and while they still have the mainstay, the mayor, Jason Kelsey, you know, he's going to be singing his swan song here pretty soon too. You know, like it's not a fall from grace because they didn't win the Super Bowl just a few years ago, but they're, they're stuck between are we trying to compete or are we rebuilding? And I give them five wins. Can we pull up their schedule, Spencer? I, I give them maybe f- – it's it's tricky. I mean, week one at the Falcons is winnable. The, you're going to lose to the Niners. You're going to lose to the Cowboys. The Chiefs are going to carve you up. I'm sorry. You might win versus the Panthers. Tampa Bay is going to steamroll you. The Raiders should win that game. You will wor- win versus the Lions. You're losing versus the Chargers. You're losing versus Denver. You're losing versus the Saints. The Giants, coin toss. The Jets, that's an away game. You know, that's not going to be easy. Trust me. The Jets beat Dallas a couple of years at home. They play tough. You're on the bye. Washington football team's defense is young and hungry. You might sweep the Jets. And then the last two, Washington and, and, and Dallas. I mean, these are tough games. These are tough, tough games that you're going to be playing. And that's a while it's not the greatest division, there's something about when these teams play each other. Dallas, Washington, they're always competitive. These are always like three-point games. There are never any blowouts. These guys try really, really hard to compete and take their each other's heads off. So five wins, six wins. <sighs> I'm not in love with the Eagles. Let's roll. Next, San Francisco 49ers. I love the 49ers. I do. I love the 49ers. I think that last year was a tough year for them because of it. Is there, Spencer, is there another team in the NFL that is more injured year in and year out than the Niners? You just, uh, I mean, they, they just fell apart, and there's just nothing really you can do about it. There was a wasted season last year. It's just still gone. I mean, they just everyone's hurt. And it was like, okay, we're getting this guy back. Okay, well, but these two guys are now out. Okay, well, we're getting these two guys back. Oh, oh man, now, now this guy's got a tourney. I mean, everyone's hurt, all right? But I still like them. I think they need to be careful with Jimmy G here. Jimmy G is not a bum. He's a decent NFL starting quarterback. You paid him because you thought he was, and he hasn't shown me anything since that says he's not. He's been injured, but he's a good quarterback. Now you get Trey Lance. Be careful. I smell Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick all over this. And, you know, I mean, Trey Lance, is he really throwing the ball around like he needs to? I mean, go look at his highlights. He just is running around there like the cops are chasing him. This is an NFL pro-style offense. You have guys like George Kittle who demands the ball. Can you get this guy the ball? Kyle Shanahan is a great NFL mind. He wants to see the ball in the air. And even last year with the with the likes of a C.J. Beathard and a Nick Mullins, I mean, these guys are horrible quarterbacks. And, I mean, they're like gym teachers now, you know. And they still threw the ball. 
all over the world, all over the place. Debo was hurt. Debo is good. Ayuk, watch out for Brandon Ayuk. I'm going to wax poetic on him in a little while. Mostert, really good. 29, but solid. They bring in Trey Sermon. They have good pieces, okay? Be careful, George Kittle, because I think he has Jeremy Shockey syndrome. All he wants to do is run people over. Can you just, like, make a move and score? Half the time that George Kittle is hurt is because he hurt himself. You don't have to run everyone over, bro. You are so super talented. You see Travis Kelsey catching balls like a wide receiver? Dude, be that. And I get that that's your style, but that doesn't equate to a long career at all. And you always, always hurt. Trent Williams, great get. Great get. Got to protect your quarterback, okay? There is absolutely no way on earth that this team should have lost the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs two years ago. That one, that might, if I was a Niners fan, I would still be losing sleep over that. That was one of the most brutal ways to lose a Super Bowl that I've witnessed in years. Like literally out of 100 times you play that game, the Niners win that game 99 times. So that's, that's one that they let go. So I think they're trying to recoup that. I think they need to get past being injured all the time. The defense is great. Bosa is a monster. Warner just got paid. He's good. Ward, Kinlaw, they're solid, man. They're solid. They're a good team. They don't have the greatest uh, home field advantage, but you're going to play these guys tough. I mean, I think they beat the Rams last year with, like, C.J. Beathard, and they had no one. They had no one. They were down to their third stringers across the board. The water boy had his pads ready. You know what I mean? So that tells you that this is a proud franchise. They're not going to take no for an answer. I do expect to see them back in the playoffs if everyone can stay healthy. And the ascension of Sermon and, and, and Ayuk, they're going to get some new blood in San Francisco. It's going to make all the difference. Watch out for them, man. They're, they're, they're not a team to be messed with and taken lightly anywhere they play. I want to uh, gauge your interest, actually, on Jimmy Garoppolo because it's kind of interesting. Would you rather have Jimmy Garoppolo or Derek Carr as your starting quarterback? Right now? Like right now? Right now, this season, the year of our Lord, 2021. With the p- same pieces? Are you saying if I put Derek Carr on the Niners and Jimmy G on the Raiders, or are you just talking about with their respective teams? Let's just keep it with the 40. Like, if would you rather have Derek Carr on the 49ers or Jimmy Garoppolo? I would rather have Jimmy G. And I'm and and I'm not like a Derek Carr truther, but I think Derek Carr gets a bad rap. I just think Jimmy G's got more to work with. I mean, Trey Sermon's going to be a stud. Brandon Ayuk is a star in the making. Debo Samuel is a poor man's DK Metcalf. They got good running backs in Mostert. They can control clock, and that defense is going to keep them in game so you don't really have to do that much. Make a big 30-yard pass here, you know, a couple slants there. It's more conducive to winning than it is stats. And so I would say Jimmy G, whereas Derek Carr, he needs to throw the ball 50 yards to Ruggs. He's going to be running for his life all game. He might have to score with his legs. Jimmy G's not going to have to do that. You know what I mean? I mean, Waller, Kittle, Wash. You see what I mean? Better coach, Shanahan versus, you know, Gruden. Uh, you know, I, I I would probably say Jimmy G. And, you know, Raider Nation, don't come for me because I said some really nice things about you all last week. So just fall back and, you know, here's a simple question. I just want to give my honest assessment. Next, Seattle Seahawks. Oh, I don't like the Seahawks, man. I got personal vendetta against this team. They have they have screwed me so many times, so many times, and I'm not a Pete Carroll fan. I I, you know, when they didn't run the ball from the one in the Super Bowl, that was it for me. That was it for me, you know. And they had one of the greatest defenses I have ever seen. Man, that Legion of Boom was something special, wasn't it? They were great. That I mean, linebacking core too, <sighs> KJ Wright and Bobby Wagner. Man, they are just so. They were so talented. I mean. Peyton Manning should have never gotten off the bus that Super Bowl. They were never in that game. It was amazing to watch that team. Percy Harvin was a thing to watch. They were a great team. You know, I'm a big Russ fan. As you know, besides the fact that I don't love the team, I love Russ. I love Russ pre Ciara. I love Russ Russ post Ciara. They need to let Russ cook. Let this guy cook, man. Can we stop with the run the ball first down, run the ball second down, and then throw a three yard out? Can we stop with that? Let this guy drop back. Give Russell Wilson the Mahomes treatment. 
let him air it out. You got DK Metcalf, who is a absolute nightmare to have to deal with. You know, I heard someone say D- DK Metcalf once went to the Virgin Islands, right? And when he left, they just called it the Islands. That's that's he's like the black Chuck Norris. Let this guy do his thing. Tyler Lockett, stud, stud, throw the ball. Chris Carson, you want to make a bet that you know is going to come to fruition? You bet that Chris Carson's going to get hurt every year. You'd be a millionaire. You'd be living in Beverly Hills. So they're always hurt. RBs are always hurt. DJ Dallas, hurt. You know, Rashad Penny, hurt. So your offensive line isn't great. He's scrambling for his life back there. Let him air it out. I mean, Russ is a little older, but he's a good quarterback. Put the ball in the air. That's where your strengths lie on the outside. Let him eat. Okay? Bobby Wagner, Jamal Adams, they got good players on defense, although I think Jamal Adams is overpaid. You know what I mean? Like, where where are the interceptions? And I know that's not his style of play. I think this contract is going to kind of fall under the Eric Berry category, second contract where you're just not going to see the production, but he's still a good player. Gerald Everett, they're, 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 they're vowing to put this guy in a position to actually make the tight end work for this offense, which you really have never seen. It's been years since they had a tight end that did anything of any kind of value. It's all about Russ and Pete Carroll. And I think sometimes Pete Carroll outthinks himself, starting with let's throw it from the one. That offensive coordinator, whoever that was, that guy should be removed from the league. You have Marshawn Lynch. It's the biggest spot of the Super Bowl. You're about to take down the mighty, mighty Patriots. Guys, do us all a favor and drop these chunks. And what do you do? Oh, let's just throw a little pass out in the fly. I mean, that you're playing with a guy's legacy in Russell Wilson here. They win that Super Bowl? Now we're talking about a completely different, they may be a potential dynasty at that point. So I'm not loving Pete Carroll at all. And look. Let's let's not act like the 12th man's not dead. Right, your fans are fantastic. You're really, really solid, but you're just not good enough to be the type of team where teams are coming in and you're going to be as loud as you might think you are. Uh, I mean, you're not louder than Kansas City. You know what I mean? You do have a solid foundation there. I, I just There's just something about Seattle that rubs me the wrong way, but I think they can win 10 games. You know, they're talking about letting Russ cook. Let Russ cook. Let the guy cook. He's a great dude. He's a great leader. Everyone loves Russ. So let him be Russ. I feel like if you, you're going to put handcuffs on Russ with guys on the outside that can eat the way they do, you should be removed as head coach. Next, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. These are not your mom and dad's tampon Bay Buccaneers. Those days are over. These are the champs. I'm going to wax poetic about them right, right now because – they deserve it. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. You know, a whole bunch of us used to make fun of the D. You know what I mean? It's like running jokes about how bad they are. They're amazing. I, look, they won a Super Bowl for a reason. Okay? It's just that simple. It's just that simple. They brought everybody back. There is no, we're going to get the band back together. The band never left. How in this day and age of salary cap hits, did they manage this? That's wizardry. Tom Brady. That's probably the only answer I can give you. Wizardry. Tom Brady would take a paycheck of $5 to stay with this team. His wife makes all the money. He's made enough money. He wants to win. I've never seen somebody with the mentality to win besides Jordan like Tom Brady. And I said it last week. I'm going to say it again. You need to write this down to understand this. This is real talk, real understanding. Tom Brady's not a great athlete. Tom Brady's not a great quarterback. Tom Brady is a smart person. He's smart. His football IQ is off the charts and unmatched by any other player in the whole National Football League. He puts himself in positions to win. So, they get Bruce Arians, who was like a dud coach. Now he's like a stud coach. Why? Brady. Brady. It's that simple. They draft well. They draft well. Dude, is there a better linebacker in this league than Devin White? And he's 23. Devin White is an absolute mammoth. Guys, you have to understand something here. What Todd Bowles did in the Super Bowl, you're never going to see that happen again. There's just no way. The Chiefs were unprepared. The Chiefs were outmanned. 
and they lost. The worst thing that could have happened to Kansas City is them beating the Bucks the way they did just a few weeks a few weeks prior. The Bucks weren't 100 percent healthy, and they went into that Super Bowl and they were ready. They're like, we got some for these cats. The Bucks went into that. The Chiefs showed up for the Super Bowl with a bat, and the Bucks had a cannon, a cannon, and Todd Bowles was absolutely masterful. This is a perfect example of not every OC or DC that deserves a shot should be a head coach. He was awful with the Jets, but boy, his game planning in Tampa has been flawless. Vita Vea, solid. Godwin, Burnett, Rojo, Evans, A.B., Gronk, Wirfs, Sue, Levante, Shaq, Winfield. My God, save some for the rest of us. Can we eat? My goodness. It will be an absolute absolute crime if this team is not in the Super Bowl again and they are my pick to go back and I have a rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs and I think with a rebuilt O-line for the Chiefs it is flip a coin but my goodness I have been one of the people who has been burying Tom Brady for years just waiting for him to fall off dude Tom Brady is 44 years old Tom Brady is 44 years old playing in the National Football League Dude, let this sink in for a second. He's 44, and his jersey is cleaner than anyone's. It doesn't even look like he's played a game when he's done. Have you ever, has anyone ever seen Tom Brady sweat? I've never seen a NFL player take advantage of opportunity like Tom Brady has. It's a Cinderella, it's a Cinderella story. And I don't like Brady. I'm not one of those Brady people. I hate Brady. But you know, there comes a time in life where you just have to give somebody their flowers, man. You got to give them their just due, and it's here. And so I think that they're in perfect position to repeat, especially when you look at their conference and who they play. If the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are not back in the Super Bowl, it's only going to be because Tom Brady is 100% injured and out for the season. And even then, I still give them a good shot. They are a great, great team, and it's been a long time since I've been mad as I was about a Super Bowl loss as I was this year. But, you know, sometimes you got to tip your cap, and this is one of them. Next, the Washington football team. This is my sleeper team for the NFC. I love this team. I love what they've done. I don't love the fact that they don't have a real name yet, but you know what? At this point, just call yourself the Washington football team. It's like when you get past it being just a joke, just leave it, bro. You know, when I saw the Cleveland Indians change your name to the Guardians, I was like, man, the Washington football team, just just leave your name. Just go WFT on the helmet leave, or leave the numbers. Your color scheme is great. It's a proud franchise. I'm not a big Daniel Snyder guy at all. I think the guy's an absolute jerk. But you're cooking with gas here. Why? Because you got Chase Young. Chase Young, I'm not going to say he's going to be like the next Aaron Donald, but my goodness. This guy is tossing people around like rag dolls. Let's look at some of this footage here. I mean, he is swarming. Sw he swarms quarterbacks. Like, you hear the footsteps coming, and you want to make a move to try to get away, but you can't because the guy is like a freaking octopus. It's almost like he's got eight arms, and he's young, and he's hungry. It reminds me of when, like, Mickey was talking to Rocky about Clubber Lang. He's the wrecking ball, you know, you know. Like, he'll knock you in the mar, rock. This guy is a wrecking machine, and he's hungry. That's Chase Young. That's Chase Young. This guy is going to be Defensive Player of the Year. Write it down. Write it down, folks. And you can come on my show and holler at me if it doesn't happen. When you have a defense like this, now you're cooking with gas, no matter who you have on offense. Because in this day and age, you can still win games 13-10. If they can't score on you, and you can hardly score two. It's a field goal game, and they got a decent field goal kicker. I like Ron Rivera. Beat cancer. Got another shot out of Carolina. Now he's with Washington. I like Fitzpatrick, man. I do. I like I like Fitz magic for them. I know a lot of times it's Fitz tragic. You know, it's a stopgap for them. They will find a quarterback. I, I promise you this. But they're they're looking. Things are looking up. I think when you look at guys like Terry McLaurin. He fits exactly what Fitzpatrick wants to do. He's throwing the ball all over the place. It's all over the place, and that's what they're going to need. They're going to need to throw the ball to score. I like I like Gibson. 
You know, Antonio Gibson is going to be really, really good in this league. He had some really good games last year. You know, he gave Dallas three touchdowns. I mean, sleeper? I don't think he's a sleeper anymore. I think he's a perennial good quarterback. National Football League running back. He's a good, good player. You know what I mean? Thomas, I mean, they, 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 they've got good players. You know, Logan Thomas might be 30, but 30 is not old for the NFL in the grand scheme of things, especially at that position. All I need you to do inside the 10 is get open because your big body is going to bring that ball in. Logan Thomas, good player. You know what I mean? But it's not just Chase Young. Montez Sweat, one of the most unrated players in the entire league. They got Allen. They got Payne. That D-line is the best in football. You saw it last year when they played the Bucs. They had a third-string quarterback in the playoffs. This guy, I think, was an accountant or something. I don't even think he was a, a quarterback. They called him up and was like, well, we heard you got some talent. You like, you want to play for us. We need you in this playoff game. It was like that. Dude, they gave Tampa the work. It was like you watched it and Tampa won, but you were like, wow, this is a stepping stone for this franchise. Okay? The defensive secondary is solid. I think they're going to be the surprise team of the NFC. I think the Giants don't stand a chance against them. I think they are going to give all the work that they possibly can to, to Dallas. I think the Eagles won't stand a chance against them. Washington football game, don't, don't be surprised if this team wins nine games with Ryan Fitzpatrick. They might even win more. It's not out of the realm of possibility. They are on their way back to being the Hogs. And it's all about that guy right there in the, in, in the middle. Chase Young, what an absolute nightmare to have to deal with if you're on the, offset, the offensive side of the ball. It's almost like this guy was created in the same lab that Aaron Donald was created in. These guys aren't born. You know, they're, they're not birthed. They're, like, created. You know, like, oh, we're going to put a little bit of LT here or a little bit of Cortez Kennedy in him. and You know what I mean? It's like or, when they're making orcs in the Lord of the Rings and they're like coming out of those, like, lava pits or whatever. Yes. You know what I mean? That, that's what it is like. You know what I mean? We're going to give them the instincts of, a, you know, DC, one of the best DCs in the world. You know, it's, I'll tell you what, man. I wouldn't want to have to face that team every week. They're young, and they're smart, and they're well-coached. Do I think they're going to win the Super Bowl? No. I think they're a real quarterback, gap, quarterback away, but a stopgap like Ryan Fitzpatrick, it suits them, and they're going to be, they're going to be fun to watch. They're going to be fun to watch. All right. We are done with the breakdown. Man, I had fun doing it. I just love talking about sports, man. It makes me feel so good talking about the NFL. we got all this stuff going on in the world with COVID and politics. Let's just get away from that for a second and talk about some football. We're going to take a little commercial break. We're going to come back with our special guest, Vegas local, AG Magic, Mr. Alex Gannam. We're going to wax poetic about the NFC and talk a little bit about what we think is going to happen. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Go get your popcorn. Go get your soda. Come back and holler at us. I'm Dexter Reed, and this is World of Matchups. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the time of our show where we bring in our special guest, where we wax poetic about football. This week's special guest, our local friend, Mr. A.G. Magic, Alex Xander Ganim, Eagles fan extraordinaire, is live and in the studio with us today. And we are going to break down what we think is going to happen in the NFC specifically and in the NFL this year. Alexander, welcome to the show. All right, Dexter. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Thank you for showing into World of Matchups the way we ha you have, and we look forward to working with you more in the future. So right off the bat, let's talk about who you think the NFC matchup is going to be in the championship game. Well, you know, I didn't think too long and hard about this because Tampa Bay just has an outstanding roster. They have talent up and down on the defense, on the offense. They've got Tom Brady. The only person that could screw this up is if Tom Brady just has a huge drop-off. I mean, your offense, you've got Antonio Brown playing the slot. You've got Mike Evans. You've got Godwin. I mean, the offensive line is there. You had mentioned it before. Brady doesn't get his jersey dirty. If that offensive line stays intact, they stay healthy, it's got to be at least Tampa Bay 
The other team, I got to tell you, the NFC is weak. They are much weaker than the AFC. I mean, you've got the Saints. Drew Bees is gone. I like Jameis Winston. I don't like their receivers outside of Michael Thomas, who's banged up. He had surgery late in the offseason. Can Traquan Smith really carry them and be that number one guy? I don't think so. You got Alvin Kamara, but teams can scheme to cover Alvin Kamara. You know, he's going to get his stats. He's going to get his stats, but I don't know if the Saints can take that next step. I like Jameis Winston. I think he is undervalued. You know, a lot of people focus a lot on his negatives more than his positives. This guy has thrown 5,000 yards in one season. That's like one of eight players ever to do it. The guy has a talent. Hey. I, I think it's going to be a rematch with the Packers and the Buccaneers. I mean, I, I can't see anybody else really competing. You know, the Panthers might be a sleeper. People are sleeping on Sam Darnold. I see Sam Darnold as kind of a Ryan Tannehill situation. He comes to Carolina. They bring Robbie Anderson. They've got chemistry there. They paid Robbie Anderson a little too much. I can see them making the playoffs. I don't see a strong push. Over in the NFC West, I mean, the, the nine, I'm trying to think of who Tampa Bay will be playing in the NFC Championship game here. You know, the Packers, are. it's likely it's going to be a rematch. You go to NFC West, they got a lot of strong teams there. Uh, Jared Goff is gone, and they bring in, in uh, at, for the Rams, and they bring in um, – what you, what's his name? <laughs> I can't. What's Matt Stafford? Thank you, Matt Stafford. Okay, he, he's good with the right coaching. They, they don't have a run game. They bring in Sony Michelle. I, I I think that's a good that's a good play there. You know, if if he starts, Daryl Henderson, that, you, the, on the defense, Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald. Man, they are wasting precious years. These guys got to get it going. They got to figure out a way to start making a run here. So outside of that, Seattle, their defense, they didn't do much to address it. Um, you know, they'll probably make the playoffs, but that defense last year, they could have freaking cover a mule if it was running routes, man. They were, they started off so strong. Yeah. They started off so strong. The offense was playing so well. They got figured out halfway through the season and fell completely off. I think it's a rematch it's between to the not hear you mention San Francisco. That's my, that's my pick. I think, I think I, that a lot of people are forgetting about the 49ers because they were just so injured last year that they kind of faded into obscurity. But they're getting a lot of people back. You know, they're getting Kittle back. They're, they're, they're strong up front. You know, I mean, I know a lot of people want to see Jimmy G gone and want to see Trey Lance spin, but they, can, they do everything well. They run the ball, they stop the run, and they play good defense. I mean, Nick Bosa is an animal. Let's say, for instance, that... They have the one seed, and Tampa has to go to San Francisco. I think at that point, anything can happen, but I do think that Tampa Bay is destined to go back to the Super Bowl. And you know what? As much as everybody would like to see Tom Brady retire, I think he would come back again. I think Tom Brady is going to be like a New York roach, that there's just nothing you can do about it. He's here until he wants to leave, and there's nothing you can do about it. But I think that your assessments are correct. And it's going to be fun to watch. The NFC is much weaker than the AFC. Let's talk about who is your sleeper player in the NFC this year that no one's really expecting much from. That's going to all of a sudden blow up. I'm I'm loving Sam Darnold. I am on the Sam Darnold train. This guy has talent. He was in New York. That organization is in shambles, man. I mean, this guy comes to Carolina. They got a new coach, Matt Rule, I believe. And he's got a college background. He did well. He's had success. Let's see how it translates to the NFL. If it does translate, you know, we've seen a lot of rookie coaches in the NFL come from the collegiate level. Chip Kelly with the Eagles, he had success the first couple of years, got figured out, didn't adjust too well. Uh, if Matt Rule can get this team to believe in his philosophy. I think Sam Darnold will have a big year, 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns. He's got the weapons to do it. He's got Christian McCaffrey. They've got a strong defense. They've got a strong O-line. And I think this could really come together for them. I am on the Sam Darnold trade this year. Dang, I like Sam Darnold. You know, yeah. I always have. I, I think he got a raw deal. Um, I, I, I don't know if I agree as far as their lines as much as you do, but I could see a situation where he's is a surprise quarterback because not no one's really expecting anything from Carolina. 
If they win six games, right. they're going to throw a parade in Carolina. I mean, halfway through the season, they start watching the Hurricanes. It's like it's like CMC or bust. You saw what happened when CMC went down. <laughs> it was it was hockey season, you know. So I I, I like that. I, I'm I'm excited. I'm just as excited this year about my this this week I should say about my my sleeper player as I was last week. Last week I picked Jerry Judy for the AFC. And all of a sudden, you're starting to see him fly up draft boards, and everyone's all talking about Jerry Judy. I'm like, I'm like, guys, I've been saying this, but my NFC sleeper player is going to be Brandon Ayuk. I'm here to tell you, folks, listen to me. Brandon Ayuk is a stud, an absolute stud. And I didn't want to wax too poetic on him during the San Francisco breakdown because I know we were coming on. Do yourself a favor, folks. Go on YouTube and just look at his highlights from his rookie he was a rookie last year rookie receiver he's a local kid grew up here in nevada even though he went to asu he's only six foot might be 190 this is like the the new wave in the nfl the six foot 190 receiver but this guy was catching balls in traffic he was jumping over fools end arounds they were putting the ball in his hands and this is what i'm talking about kyle shanahan despite having like no quarterback still put this guy in position to make plays I believe that Brandon Ayuk last year caught like 60 balls as a rookie and almost had 800 yards with no Jimmy G. Go look at, type in Brandon Ayuk hurdle. Bro, he You know, jumped, I, I, I got to say something. He jumped over that. this Brandon, guy. Brandon Ayuk, I love Brandon Ayuk. I know you're sold on Jimmy G. One of the reasons why I didn't pick uh, the Niners to go to the NFC Championship game or even the divisional round is because of Jimmy G. You like him. I'm not sold on this guy. I, I think we see Trey Lance halfway through the season. Jimmy G has had chance after chance. He's shown flashes. I don't think Kyle Shanahan is sold on him. That's obviously the reason why they drafted Trey Lance. And I don't think this guy has it to take them to the next level. I don't disagree. You know, I don't disagree. I think that they're trying to kind of do like a McVay golf situation with Jimmy G. Like when you hear them talk about them, they're never like, yeah, yeah. this is our guy. And, you know, he's going to like give the you know tutelage to Trey Lance. You don't hear any of that. Like literally, like they're um, almost like they'll never say it publicly, but they're like hoping he gets hurt and just like fades into obscurity. You know, they right. want Trey Lance. My issue with Trey Lance is that he's young and he's a runner. You know, right. if you look at his college film, there's not a lot of balls in the air. You know what I mean? And you have Debo Samuel. You have Brandon Ayuk. You have George Kittle. You have guys catching the ball out of the backfield. You're going to have to throw the ball. This is the NFL. You're going to have to throw the ball. My same issues with Jalen Hurts. You look at these running quarterbacks year after year after year where their first inkling is to run. None of them do anything but put up stats. They never win. They never win. Look at Cam. They just put up stats. You know, look at Vic. They just put up stats. You have to throw the ball. And so while I know Jimmy G is not Peyton Manning, I still think right now, personally, right now, he's the best quarterback on, on the 49ers. And I don't love him, but I love that situation for him. And, dude, they paid him a lot of money. I don't know about you, but if I pay someone yeah. a lot of money to do anything, I want you to do what I asked you to do before I give up on you, or find a way to give up on you. So it's more kind of like that than what, what – what I think you're saying. But yeah, Brandon Ayuk, I'm telling you, people sleeping on it, dude, people snoring on Brandon Ayuk. His one <laughs> highlight, he jumps over, dude, he jumped over this dude and scored. I was just like, duh. I'm like, that guy has got a future in this league. Let's talk about who's your sleeper defense for the NFC this year? Oh, boy. Let's see. Sleeper defense. Yeah. You know, I don't want to say the Washington football team. I don't know if they're a sleeper defense. They got first-round picks up and down that line. Uh, I think they're going to be pretty solid. Um, you know, the Bears having Khalil Mack back, they're going to be solid. I would I would probably have to go with the Washington football team. I, I don't know if it's so much a sleeper, but they're definitely going to, you know, that's a top-five unit right there. And uh, if, yeah, if Ryan Fitzpatrick, doesn't put them in crappy situations every game, which is absolutely possible because uh, we know Ryan Fitzpatrick likes to have a great three-game stretch and then disappears for the next 10 games. They could have a top-five unit. You know, the Washington football team are in a crappy division. I, mean, I hate to say this with my Eagles, and they could probably come out winning it again if Ryan Fitzpatrick can play 
at a efficient and con consistent level. You know, they did. Washington did nothing to address their quarterback situation other than bring in an old Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't like that move. I like Ron Rivera as a coach. Uh, he's got a defensive mind. That's a top five unit. I think that's a sleeper there. Yeah, I don't know if it's so much a sleeper, but I do like the pick. I was just waxing poetic when I did their breakdown about them. I just I have the biggest man crush on Chase Young. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I don't like a defensive player in the NFL right now more than him. And I think that we all need to really be watching his career with a level of enthusiasm that we haven't seen for a defensive player breaking into the NFL in over a decade. My sleeper defense is going to be the New York Giants. That's my sleeper defense. I saw enough from them last year for them to kind of stay in games, even even with just horrible coaching decisions and not a whole lot from their offense to be like, okay, we've got something here. You know, the Jabril Peppers is, is good. Blake Martinez is good. They're almost like the no-name defense. No one's going to think they're good. But the games that they won, go back and look at some of the film. The defense won those games. They put them into positions and made stops. And so I don't think they're going to be on the field as long this year because they're going to get guys like Soldier back, and I think they'll be able to score more. You know, Saquon will be back. You know what I mean? That, 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 that's huge. You know, when your defense is on the, the field for a 10-minute drive and you're just getting gashed, there's nothing you can do. But if all of a sudden you can run the ball and control some, some clock, which I think that they'll be able to do. I think it might be rough going, going on early because I know they've got a really rough schedule out of the gate. But I think the New York Giants, I think they're going to surprise some people with their defense. And they have been perennially bad, bad, bad for a, a long time. So that'll be really interesting to see. Um, let's yeah. talk about Zeke. I don't know if you've been watching Hard Knocks. I've been checking in Hard Knocks. I, I really yep. like I, – I, I love Hard Knocks. It's – it's football porn. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, I love it. it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. And a lot of people want to bash Zeke. I'm one of those people that I actually think Zeke is going to have a bounce back year. I think the potential for Zeke to actually be a top three running back, maybe four, is there. What do you think that this Zeke is going to do this year? Well, uh, I think he's going to have a bounce back here. I mean, that O-line last year had a lot of injuries, and Dak was gone. You know, they were able to kind of skin. Even though T Tony Pollard played well in his absence, uh, I think Zeke is going to have a big bounce back here. I, I, I kind of saw, I want to say, a, a lack of motivation at times uh, when he was playing. I don't, you know, watching Hard Knocks, I know Zeke and Dak Prescott our best friends. So I know that now watching the show. So there, there may have been a little motivation loss once Dak went down and uh, some of their big name offensive linemen went down. I think this year they got CeeDee Lamb, Mari Cooper. They've got a great O-line. If everybody's healthy coming back, he's going to be a top five back for sure. Definitely think he'll be, I would put money down on top five. Top three might be stretching it when you think about yeah. the CMC, the Dalvin Cooks, the Derrick Henry's an absolute monster. But you never know. I think pre the man is a freak specimen. I mean, the guy was he's not human. He was he's a robot, man. The guy has an amazing combination of speed, power, elusiveness. This guy is and should be a top three back this year. I mean, no questions about it. Yeah, he definitely yeah. can be. I, I, I like Zeke more than most people this year. You know, normally I kind of go with kind of the grain of what a lot of people are saying and thinking, and a lot of times it doesn't, you know, come to fruition. I think this year I'm going to kind of make a little, you know, note to kind of like, well, what would I, what would my second pick for this be? Because a lot of times what you think is going to happen in the NFL not, never really happens. You know what I mean? Um, let's talk about Kyler Murray. Spencer and I were talking about Kyler Murray when I first got here. I think outside of Brady, he's the most important player in the NFC. What do you think is Kyler Murray ceiling this year? And, you know, I don't know. I, I still think he has a lot of growing to do. Um, I still feel like he is a run first quarterback, whether that's by design, or not the offensive coordinator calling these plays. I do want to see him pass and be a little more accurate. They bring in AJ Green play opposite DeAndre Hopkins. They bring in J.J. Watt. They got Chandler Jones and Buda Baker on the defense. I mean, this guy has talent around him. 
Uh, I, he's got to take it to the next level this year. I want to see more passing from him. I want to see less running, more passing. Uh, he's this guy. Uh, he, he's got. I don't. I don't want to say he's inaccurate uh, like a Michael Vick. He, he's a little better than that. But they got to put him in situations pass. Uh, you do not bring in AJ Green, even though he's a little older. This is going to open stuff. I mean, not that DeAndre Hopkins even needs somebody else on the other side to open things up for him. The man is a beast. But uh, you know, their their running game. Uh, I don't even know. Do they have a running game? They, they lose Kenny on Drake. They have Chase Edmonds. I mean, that's their top back. That could hurt them. I want to see more passing from this man. I want to see more passing from Kyler Murray too. I want you know. I want to see more passing from all these run first quarterbacks. You know, Danny and I yep. were talking about this last year, about last week, excuse me, about Lamar. Like Cam, Lamar. You know what I mean, Kyler. Like if your mentality is the minute your 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 running back misses the block, just to take off, like. You're not going to make it in this league. You got to be able to stand in there and take a hit. You know, Mahomes only takes off when he absolutely has to. Your your job as a quarterback is to stand in there and take that hit and put push the ball downfield. You put yourself in harm's way running and getting hurt. That's why you always see these guys get hurt. Now Lamar is a different animal, and I don't think Kyler's on the level of Lamar. But I picked Josh Allen to be MVP this year. If and 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 obviously to me, Mahomes is the obvious choice. Everyone knows this. The O-line is rebuilt. It's all Mahomes all day. He's the golden boy. But I want to go I want to go outside the box with this one. And I think if it's not Josh Allen, I think it could be Kyler Murray. Just because it's just air raid, it's either going to be boom or bust for Kingsbury. He's either going to be the first quarter the first coach fired this year or they're going to have an amazing season where Kyler throws with the extra game like 4800 yards, 40 touchdowns. And runs like for another six touchdowns with 500 yards. It's either it's, I don't think there's going to be one or the other, but I really, really like Kyler Murray. One more question before we close it up. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Now, I, I, I this never happens. It rarely ever happens. I don't even think it has it happened where there was a rematch of the teams in the Super Bowl the year before. I, you even know Spencer? I don't. I don't think it's ever happened. I think that this is the year that it happens. I think Tampa Bay is destined to get back. I don't think it's a question. I think their path to the Super Bowl will be fairly easy. The NFC is a lot weaker. Tampa is going to be even better. There might be the Super Bowl hangover. You know, I think they still have to get home field, but they could be get back. But you definitely want to watch out for them versus the Niners. I don't like the Packers because they can't stop anybody. You cannot outscore teams and win in the playoffs. You have to stop somebody. So I think it'll be the, the Niners. But eventually, we're going to see Tampa. Kansas City, I was watching them last night. The way they score, they score with ease. And now they've given Mahomes a fortress. If that offensive line does 80% of what I think it will be, I don't care what their schedule is. They're going to win 13 games. It doesn't matter. And if they have home field advantage in the playoffs, they're going to the Super Bowl because their fans will will them back there. Just like their fans willed them back there before, they will find a way. Mahomes is God. We all know this. It might be the you know, like it was the first time there was a home field for the for a team in the Super Bowl last year. I think this might be the first time that you actually see a rematch of last year's Super Bowl. And I think this time around, I think the Kansas City Chiefs will find a way to win it on the leg of Harrison Butker, 55-yard field goal in some dramatic fashion to win it all. There have been six uh, Super Bowl rematches in the history of the game. Just quick six. note. Six Super Bowl rematches in the history of the game. I think this year is lucky number seven. Go ahead. What do you think? I, I think Tampa Bay cruises to the Super Bowl this year. I agree with that. Uh, you know, the Chiefs did a little overkill in the offseason, bringing in uh, these high-priced overlinemen. I like it. I love it. I think that was obviously their biggest issue in the Super Bowl. They couldn't protect Mahomes. And Tampa Bay exposed it and allowed – three field goals, which is uncanny for the Chiefs. I do like the Buffalo Bills uprising. I think they're uh, a great team to watch. I think they're going to be in the championship game. Uh, if Baltimore, you know, if Lamar Jackson can recapture that MVP season he had a couple years ago, they have a strong, strong squad. I think those teams are your biggest threats. Other than that, I hate to agree with you, but I see a Chiefs Buccaneers Super Bowl. I don't think Tampa Bay repeats. I think the Chiefs get this one. I agree. You know, if Kansas City can just bend and not break, you know, we still have to wait yep. to see what's going to happen with Frank Clark and the whole Uzi situation. You know, they are getting some guys back. DeAndre Baker's back. You know, Lucas Nyang is back. 
Dunar Vatar Deep is back, albeit him being hurt, he should be ready for week one. Even some of those guys who were starters are now bench players because, you know, they got the Trey Smiths, they got the Toonies. They're going to be all right. I mean, look, you don't go out and buy a million-dollar car and have no insurance. And that's what they did with Mahomes. You have to have insurance. You have to protect him. Like, literally, Absolutely. his jersey needs to be cleaner than Brady's this year. It has to be even cleaner than Brady's. It has to look like he didn't even put on a jersey for the Chiefs to have the kind of exceptional year they need to have to win and get that one seed. And their, their schedule is tough. They play tough. Everyone's coming for Kansas City. You know what I mean? Like, they, they yep. won that Super Bowl and start puffing out their chest and feeling feeling and feeling good about themselves. And everyone's like, yeah, all right, we're going to see y'all. You know, we're going to see y'all, dudes. We got something for y'all. You know what I mean? We're going to get Mahomes. You know, we're going to get them. They want to get, like, how they used to do with Brady. It's now going to be that for Mahomes, you know. And so I think they're going to have a tougher time winning it again. I will be the first to tell you, even as a fan, that there were some questionable calls that helped the Chiefs win a Super Bowl. This time around, they're going to have to take it. They're going to have to take it. And I, I think they're going to find a way to do it. So I, I, we agree, which is interesting. I didn't think you were going to say that. All right, man. <laughs> we're going to wrap it up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming on and watching us today. Again, Alex, we appreciate you showing into World of Matchups. We look forward to having you on again. And I'm sure that you will bring the fire the same way you did today. Um, coming All up day. soon, a couple days, a couple days, 16 days, 15 days until week one. We are going to open up with our prediction week. I believe it's going to be the 10th of September. And we'll start breaking down every single matchup, every single week. We're going to talk about the two teams that play each other. And we are not going to stop until we leave no stone unturned. Game planning, coaches, COVID, it's on and popping. So we got through the entire breakdown for all 32 teams. And now it's about the world of matchups that are coming to you all live and direct from Rabbit TV Studios in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. Again, we thank you for your support. Um, you can find us on social media. Definitely check us out. You want to look for us at World of Matchups on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and like and subscribe. Hit the smash button on our YouTube page. This will keep you up to date with all the content, all the shows, all the videos, everything that we have coming out. It'll let you know what we're doing and when we're doing it. Again, you are watching the most comprehensive and progressive, uncensored National Football League television show to hit the big screen this year. Ladies and gentlemen, from Spencer the Wiz and myself, we bring to you World of Matchups. Thanks for tuning in.